welcome to Midweek Connect from Ealing Church Romsey. Uh, my name's Dave Walker. Good to have you join us today as we continue our journey through the Gospel of John. And today we have a section of the Gospel of John, which you'll all be very, very familiar with. Uh, but as we go through a book, quite often we, we sort of encounter stuff that we're familiar with, and it's good to just have another delve into it to see what God wants to encourage us with. John 6, 1 to 15, I'm going to write, read it all, and the title is The Feeding of the 5,000, or Jesus Feeds the 5,000. I'll read it through, and we've got some stuff in here which I know and I believe will encourage you today in your situation as it has done with me. John chapter 6. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with the disciples. The Jewish Passover feast excuse me, was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, though, for he knew already uh, in mind what he was going to do. <clears throat> Philip answered him. Now, this is the apostle Philip. There are two Philips in the New Testament. One was the, the deacon Philip, the servant Philip, the one, one of the seven who spoke to the Ethiopian. But this is the apostle Philip. And the Apostle Philip is hardly ever mentioned in the New Testament, but this is one of the times when he did. Philip answered, um, it will take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each person to have a, a bite. But then Jesus decides to do something which is a pattern for us if we have need or lack or impossibilities of any kind. Another of disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far will they go among so many? And you might be asking the question yourself so many times. How far will this go? How can I do this? How can we achieve this? How can I get through that day? How can we uh, together sort this situation out. Jesus said, now that's the most important thing ever, Jesus said. What has Jesus said to you in your situation? Because if Jesus says something, it's always important to listen. He said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus took loaves, gave thanks and distributed those to... Um, who were seated as much as they wanted he did the same with the fish i'm just going to leave it there and we'll come back to a few um points now some people look at this nowadays and say oh this is a natural event jesus got them to sit down and as a result of him encouraging them they were just very generous and they shared the food that they had no 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 that's rubbish this was a miracle of god where god physically had food appear out of nowhere it was a miracle and <clears throat> these sort of things happened then jesus did things like that and it still happens today miracles happen then and still happen today it is possible for followers of jesus to encounter these types of things today even things like this if you trust jesus christ with all your heart and give him everything give him your problems and and just follow what he says i'm telling you now that he is able to do whatever he wants now this is a very familiar theme um in a lot of my sermons i know that uh, probably because I'm, I'm good at encouraging but also because we've hit it again in in the gospel of john so i've got to i'm going to share it but they realized that they needed to feed the crowd. Philip said uh, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. They had a need. They had um, something they had to do and they couldn't complete. And God always reminds us of the fact that we need him daily. You see, this is how Jesus trained the apostles, Philip and all the others. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, 
uh, Matthew, Thomas, James, Simon the Zealot, uh, Thaddeus, Jews, Judas, um, you know, all of them, um, you know, you know, James the Lesser, Judas Iscariot, all of them, all of them were trained by Jesus over uh, a period of three and a half years where they saw they had need. Jesus got them to do what he wanted and he supplied that need. They were being trained up, trained up. Then Jesus was crucified, went to heaven and then the, the apostles spread out and spread this message throughout the world. And this is the message he, he spreads to you that even though you follow him and obey him, there was a discipleship, a pattern that you need to follow also. But two things happened here. Firstly, um, he what he says to you as well, he says, just give what you've got. Um, have the people sit down. There's plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. Jesus then took the loaves and he gave thanks. So Jesus says, even though you've got um, a lack, just give what you've got. Do the best you can. And also give thanks. Jesus gave thanks. So here then is now the pattern. Uh, you identify the need. You give the need to God. You then give thanks. Jesus gave thanks. Use what you can. Get the loaves and fishes that you have. And then finally, allow this event to promote the gospel. What happened then straight after this? Verse 15, something crazy happens. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, because now all this bread and, and, and fish has appeared, um, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. They wanted to make him a king by force. But Jesus says, no, make me the king of your heart. When Jesus died and, and, and on the cross and, and was rose again, he became the ransom for us. And I say to you now, if you're not a Christian, not only can God supply your, your needs in the way that he wants to, if you trust him, if you give thanks, if you give him what you've got, got if you completely trust him, but he can also save you. Yes, they, they wanted to make him a king, but he was already king. Do you want to make him king of your heart and make him Lord of your life? I dare you to. I dare you to give your life to Jesus. But not only that, what was happening here was this became a testimony. We have all heard about the feeding of the 5,000. And when you give your lack to God, you give your depression, you give your absolute utter sorry state, whatever it is, whatever state it is you're in, you give it to God and you say, thank you for everything. And I will help me to do what I can with what you've given me and allow him to perform a miracle of some kind or do what he wants, how he wants to, and that will become a testimony. Look at what you've got that you're struggling with this week and give it to God and allow him to become a testimony for you. Please come and join us at Elim Church Romsey this Sunday, 10.30 a.m. And we look forward to seeing you. But thank you for uh, joining us for Midweek Connect from Elim Church Romsey today. God bless you.